This is Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker here on a beautiful day in San Francisco, and they say maybe the largest crowd ever at Candlestick Park. This is one of those games, I'll guarantee it, that's going to be played with playoff emotion and intensity. And the Bears win the toss, and Ray Worshing gets the game underway and kicks it to Willie Galt at the 10-yard line. And Galt, who has run it back 99 yards this year for a touchdown, is stopped by Carl Monroe at the 27-yard line. As we look at the Bears, backs and receivers, Ken Marjoram is in for the injured Dennis McKinnon. They don't go down too much then. He's an acrobatic receiver. Catch it anywhere. Also a replacement at tight end where Tim Reitman is in for Emory Moorhead with a sore knee. Mike Ditka says that uh, Reitman plays like he did. That's pretty good. Not bad. First and 10 at the 27-yard line for the top-rated passer in the NFC, Jim McMahon. Matt Suey and Walter Payton in the backfield. Suey goes in motion. Passing on first down, McMahon finds Payton out of the backfield. And Payton... Brings it up to the 34-yard line where Ricky Ellison and Dwight Hicks make the stop. So they go to the air on first down. This is the base defense for the 49ers. We'll see a lot more up there. Seven defensive linemen. You'll see it all. They still haven't gotten Fred Dean on track. Who's been really outstanding in that group? Todd Shell's an emerging star at outside linebacker. And we'll be talking a lot of the big switch. Hicks for a lot. Cornerback for safety. Neither one of them like it, but that's the way it is right now. Second down and three at the 34-yard line. Ken Marjoram. Comes out to the left, ball to the right. McMahon to pass again. Can't find his first. And hits his tight end, Tim Reitman, for a first down into 49er territory at the 42-yard line. Ronnie Lott makes the stop, a 24-yard pickup. Watch, this is just good protection up front now by the Chicago Bears. McMahon with all kinds of time to look around. He's going right. Reitman runs across. Short has plenty of time against the zone. And there's the completion. Good job by the offensive line of the Bears. No pressure on McMahon. Originally a number three pick back in 82. He was the first player signed in the USFL out of UCLA. Tim Reitman, the tight end for Emory Moorhead. First and ten at the San Francisco 42. Play action pass. McMahon looking deep. And Dwight Hicks was defending against Willie Galt. Galt had him beaten, and the pass went beyond the end zone. No question what Jim McMahon's trying to establish early here. Well, this is not quite what the Bears expected. The Bears expected that they would use Eric Ride against Willie Galt man for man and then and help Dwight Hicks over in the other corner with zone. But that time, Hicks had him man for man and did a good job on him deep. You know they're going to test Dwight Hicks. But they expected the other guy on him, Eric Wright. So it's second and 10 on the 42. The 49ers bring in their nickel package. And Fred Dean, who is yet to pick up a sack this year, number 74, is in the game. He says, I'll be OK once I get my hands on the quarterback. He hasn't done that yet. There's Walter Payton, who scored his 100th and 101st touchdown last week. and there's a flag. Matt Suey on a draw play. Brings it out to the 37-yard line. We saw a 49er right side of the line move. Let's see if he was drawn. Jeff Stover and Carlton Williamson made the stop on Suey. The referee today is Gordon McCarter. And the penalty is against San Francisco. Gary Big Hands Johnson was offside, offside that time. Number 97 on the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. There he is, watch him move. And McMahon had a free one, but it was a draw to Seward. Second down and five at the 37-yard line. The Bears have won 16 of the last 20 games that Jim McMahon has started. Reitman goes strong side to the left. And McMahon to the right sideline. To Willie Gall, and he's got it inside the five. Willie Gall to the four-yard line. Torrey Nixon, a nickel defender on the play, and Willie Gall, who has the best average per reception Torrey in the NFL. Torrey Nixon is a rookie that the 49ers picked up after the season started from the Washington Redskins. He was their number one draft choice. Couldn't sign him. 
And who can stay with Galt? Great throw by McMahon. And Galt's out of bounds at about the three. A 33-yard pickup, and Willie Galt, the big play man, has given the Bears first and goal on the three, and consternation for Bill Walsh early here. It's a sensational throw by Jim McMahon. Don't forget, in the championship game last year, the 49ers did not have to contend with Jim McMahon. Calvin Thomas is in the backfield now with Matsui, and he goes in motion. Play action, McMahon. Wide open and tipped away. And it was tackle a, eligible out there. Andy Frederick was the tackle, and he was wide open until Ricky Ellison saw him and got a hand on that pass and saved a touchdown. Moorhead probably came in as a tight end because Emory Moorhead is, uh, is not feeling really well in a blocking situation. He delayed for a second, then went out, number 71. He has to report to the officials, of course, and tell them. The officials then tell the 49ers that 71 is eligible, and Ricky Ellison just batted it away. He saved a touchdown that would have given Mike Ditka's team the lead. So it's second and goal on the three. And this time, Walter Payton is in for the touchdown. Walter Payton. That's touchdown number 102 of a sensational career and a fine block by Mark Bortz, the left guard in the Bears strike early. Bortz over there, Jim Covert to tackle. Walter Payton told us yesterday, I asked him, I said, what play would you like to run if it's your favorite? He said, short yardage. Give me a fourth and one when we really need it, or third and two down close to the goal line, right in this kind of situation when we need it, I'll take it. A good kick out block on Eric Wright, and Walter doesn't need a whole lot of them. And now Kevin Butler, who's the leading scorer in the NFL, Steve Fuller is holding to try to add the seventh point here early. And Butler is now a perfect 20 for 20 on the year. And with 12.31 remaining in the first quarter, the Chicago Bears score on their first possession and lead it 7 to nothing. The key play is a 24-yard pass to Tim Reitman, the tight end, and a big 33-yard strike to Willie Gall to set up this touchdown, six plays, 73 yards. The champions against the would-be champions. The Bears have struck first and lead 7-0 on a three-yard run by Walter Payton on the Bears' first possession of the ballgame. They're both calling each other the best team in the league. Mike Ditka still said the 49ers are defending champions. They're the best. We haven't been fooled by watching the films, by looking at Minnesota and New Orleans, the two teams that beat San Francisco. On the other side of the coin, Bill Walsh is saying the Bears are the best. I'll tell you, we were impressed with the Chicago Bears, though, the players we talked with yesterday. They seem to act like they're winners. You can see the skin portion of the infield, uh, even though the baseball season is over here in San Francisco and maybe over for good, they have not covered the skin portion with grass yet. Well, they've only had a week to do it. Uh, in two more weeks, the 49ers play here again against Philadelphia, and I'm sure the facade will be in then. Kevin Butler will kick off. Carl Monroe and Dick ha Derek Harmon are back for the 49ers, and it's going to go to Harmon at the three. And Harmon brings it out to the 20-yard line where the tackle is made by Calvin Thomas. We mentioned a key block by the left guard, Mark Bortz, on Eric Wright. Wright will come across for the force. Bortz will kick him out here, and Peyton makes the run. Take a look at it. The left guard, Mark Bortz, on the pull. The cornerback, 21, Wright is up. There's the kick out right there by Bortz. You'll see it. Right there's the key block, and Walter goes on in. 7-0. Chicago first and 10 at the 20 for San Francisco and Joe Montana trying to get a couple back overthrows Dwight Clark who's covered by Leslie Frazier setting the 49ers offensively for you and the one thing that they have is a great running attack with Tyler and Craig but look at Jerry Rice making his first start a new starter Freddie Solomon with a concussion last week but Rice has shoulder problems same offensive line key right there is can Fred Quillen handle Dan Hampton in that 46 defense Second and ten. We expect a passing game, mostly short passes from the 49ers. Here, Roger Craig takes off and cuts in nicely. A penalty marker is down. Roger Craig, Craig carries it out to the 25-yard line where McMichael and Singletary make the stop. The front four, and a good one. The penalties against the 49ers. We'll check the rest of the Bears' defense after Gordon McCarter unravels this penalty. 
49ers, the number two rushing offense in the conference against the number one rushing defense, the Bears. Illegal use of hands, number 71 offense, repeat second down. It's Keith Fawnhorst on the penalty, the rest of the Bears defense. And that's a good unit right there with the youngster Wilbur Marshall really coming on. And the secondary. Gary Fensick, they're saying, playing perhaps the best football of his career. Second down and 20. Back of the 10-yard line. Now you've met everyone on both sides, on both sides of the ball. Montana pumps, hits Jerry Rice out at the 20. And Jerry Rice, whistle had blown. No fumble on the play, and Rice is short by about four yards of a first down. He picked up 17. Wilbur Marshall and Mike Richardson make the stop on a highly regarded rookie who so far has lived up to his notices. He's at the bottom of your screen right here. Takes off the bump, kind of a little bit of a pick, and he gets through some traffic, and he's wide open, almost like a basketball pick. He eased through the traffic there in Montana, found him. He's out of Mississippi Valley State. He scored his first NFL touchdown last week against Atlanta, and he goes in motion. Third and three. Fumble. Everyone tripping over each other. It's recovered by the 49ers. Wendell Tyler recovers it. We talked so much before the game about the famed 46 defense by the Bears, Wayne. And here's the key to it. Look in here in the middle. See those three men? You've got one against the center, one against both guards. No room for error in the middle. It keeps people off Singletary in the middle and puts a lot of pressure on Montana and those guards and center right away. Max Runniger nearly has his kick blocked. Good high kick. Ken Taylor at the 31 for the Bears. And Taylor has stopped at the 37. The Green Bay Packers in a tough NFC Central match beat Minnesota today 20 to 17. As you look at Bill Walsh of the 49ers, they trail the Chicago Bears 7 0. This is Dick Stockton with Wayne Walker here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco in a battle between the defending champions and the team they beat to get into the Super Bowl last year, the Bears. Chicago scored on its first possession, capped by Walter Payton's three-yard run. Mike Ditka in his fourth year has really revived this Bear team. First and 10, Chicago on their 38. Matsui, the fullback in motion. Fake a draw, hit Reitman, the tight end. First down, and deep deeper into San Francisco territory to the 36-yard line. Good for 26 yards and a first down. And with Emory Moorhead out, Tim Reitman has already made a big contribution. Reitman is right here, the tight end. He gets a release downfield, but watch Walter Payton back here. Pick up the blitzing linebacker, Todd Shell. That enabled McMahon to get it off. There's the snap. Now Walter, a fake right there, but he sees the blitz coming, takes a step out, picks off the blitzer, and they can get the ball to Reitman because of that. Reitman has caught two passes for 50 yards thus far, with 9.49 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 at the San Francisco 36. McMahon has time. He can run. He does. He gets a first down to the 25-yard line. Maybe inside the 25. Ronnie Lott and Michael Walter make the stop, and that's the extra dimension the Bears have with McMahon. Well, now the 49ers know what it's like when teams prepare against them and, and the troubles that Montana will give them. Same way here with McMahon. Good coverage downfield. Nobody open. Now McMahon will come out of there. The 49ers, number one thing this week they said for the defense, stay in your lanes. Number two, they said, give up your pass rush to get back in the lane. They did that. McMahon still picked up yardage. All you can do back is go back to the defensive huddle now and shake your head a little bit. In 83, when the Bears won in Chicago, McMahon led all rushers with 74 yards. First and 10 at the 24. Peyton up the middle. And Peyton gets inside the 20-yard line. Tackled by Dwayne Board and Michael Walter. Mixing his plays nicely, going short and going long. Jim McMahon so far. It's a wham play, a counter step. And Matt Suey comes through, leads through, and gets a block on Ricky Ellison, number 50 right there. And Walter's got the strength and the leg drive to pick up about six or seven. He scored his 102nd career touchdown. As you look at Chicago's dominance so far, we have eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Second down and three on the 49er, 18. McMahon can't 
go right, goes left and overthrows. The defenders were covered well all over the field by the 49ers, I should say, the receivers. Yeah, he threw that, that. There was no one 40 yards within that ball. I've always thought from a defensive standpoint that ought to be intentional grounding, but it's never been called. Third down and three. Jim McMahon, the fifth player drafted three years ago, in fact, the second quarterback. Arch Leister was the first quarterback drafted, and he was waived this week by the Colts. Balls at the 18. Play action. McMahon doesn't make it. He's shy by two yards. Carlton Williamson and Keena Turner. And Turner got him from behind on a big tackle by Turner, a native of Chicago. I'm not sure whether this was a design play or he just didn't just decided not to give the handoff to Walter. It looks like it was designed bootleg. He was going to throw it, nothing there. And so we ran it out, and Keena Turner caught him from behind. Everyone looks surprised on that play except Peyton. So on fourth down, the Bears will try to add to their 7-0 lead. And this will be a 35-yard attempt. Steve Fuller holding Kevin Butler, who is 10 of 14 this year. And Butler's kick is good. So the rookie from Georgia has kicked the field goal, and the Bears lead at 10 to nothing. That'll go down as a 34-yard field goal. And with 7-18 remaining here in the fourth quarter, first quarter, the Chicago Bears lead 10 to nothing. We want to welcome the fans who saw the Los Angeles Rams in a seesaw battle stay undefeated and beat Tampa Bay today, 31 to 27. The other unbeaten team in the NFL, the Chicago Bears, are leading the San Francisco 49ers 10 to nothing. This is Dick Stockton along with Wayne Walker and Mike Ditka's Bears trying to go 6 and 0. The Rams very intently watching this game because if the Bears can go on and win, they will have a healthy three-game lead over the 49ers after six games of the season. 49ers said that they have painted themselves in a corner, and they really have. They said they are a cornered football team, and everyone knows it. Walter Payton scored from three yards out on the first possession to give the Bears a 7-0 lead as Carl Monroe goes back. And Kevin Butler kicked a 34-yard field goal to make it 10 to nothing. Butler was a fourth-round draft pick out of the University of Georgia. The Bears have two new kickers this year. Bob Thomas did the place kicking last year. Dave Finn did the punting. Line drive kickoff. Monroe right at the goal line. And he's hit shy of the 20-yard line by Thomas Sanders. First and 10 at the 18 for Joe Montana and the 49ers. Montana finds Russ Francis. And the Niners tight end fumbles. Let's see if the whistle had blown or the Bears had recovered. We'll wait for the official signal. Russ Francis on the receiving end. And the Bears have recovered. It was Dan Hampton who recovered the fumble by Russ Francis, and the Bears get another big break. Watch Montana now on his drop, a very short one. Five-step drop, Francis across, Singletary bumps him and then chases. See what happens with the football. Singletary's in there. It's an arm around it. Francis still got control, but it's waved around a little bit. And it looked like it was Wilbur Marshall who came in, got an arm on the ball, and knocked it out. Number 58, Wilbur Marshall. First and 10 at the 26 for the Bears, leading 10 to nothing with under seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Threatening to move way ahead here in the first quarter. McMahon. Chase. Incomplete, and it was Jeff Stover who really put a terrific rush on Jim McMahon. Looks like they had a screen set up to that side, but the back didn't get out. He must have gotten hooked up inside by one of the linemen, did not get out. Here's Jeff Stover right here. He's the one that put all the pressure on McMahon. 
These two linemen here will come out later, and I think that McMahon had a screen call. They'll set up and then drift on out in the flat. And see, Suey did fall down over a pile, so there was no screen, nobody there for McMahon to fall on. Jeff Stover with a good rush, and he really got by Keith Van Horn nicely. Crowd booing. They thought it should be intentional grounding. Time remaining in the first quarter. Second and 10 on the 26 now. Here's Walter Payton. Hit immediately by Ricky Ellison. He met him head on, and they love it here in San Francisco. He's pumped up. Yes, he is. He always is. Sunday to Sunday. This is his kind of game. He loves to play in a football game when the other team has a great runner. And he'll usually respond with a pretty good ball game. Put his helmet right in the middle of Walter's num numbers, raised him up, and then help came in. Rick leads the 49ers in tackles, and the man who forced the fumble, Wilbur Marshall. Third down and eight now at the 24. James Manis and Brad Anderson go in. Extra receivers for the Bears who are in the shotgun. And a flag is thrown. The clock had run down, and McMahon may have taken too much time. Five-yard penalty. Mike Ditka. Didn't look at the films of last year's championship game until recently. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Spent a lot of time, Wayne, before he looked at him. Yeah, well, he looked at him once. He said, we didn't really break him down until a couple of weeks ago. And then he said that he realized that there are just some little things that they could have done that would have really put him in that game and maybe won it. Looks like they've made some of those adjustments here this afternoon. Third down and 13 at the 29. Four wide receivers for the Bears. Willie Galt. McMahon, wide open. Is Willie Galt to the 22-yard line. He'll be shy of a first down. Ronnie Lott making the tackle. But it's good enough to set up another field goal opportunity for Kevin Butler. They didn't get the first down. They're short by about five yards on the play. But Kevin Butler comes in now and will try to extend the Bears' lead to 13 to nothing. Butler... Kicked a 34-yard field goal just a moment ago. This will be a 38-yard attempt, and this matches his longest field goal so far this year. Fuller is holding. And Butler's kick is perfect. So Butler matches his longest field goal, 38 yards, and with four minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter, the Bears capitalize on the fumble by Russ Francis and now lead it 6-13 to nothing. It is 13 to nothing with just under five minutes to go and Carl Monroe is back deep along with Derek Harmon and Kevin Butler will be kicking off for the Bears. So it has been all Chicago so far in the first quarter here. Here's a team that's come from behind in four of their five victories so far. They jump out quickly. Monroe at the two-yard line. And Monroe nearly broke one. Brings it out to the 25-yard line where Jim Morrissey makes the tackle. There's a message on the scoreboard here that the entire 49ers squad and organization send their good wishes to Mrs. Marie DiBartolo, who's not feeling well. And, of course, uh, as they say here, she's the 49er biggest fan, and no one doubts that. First and 10 at the 25, Jerry Rice in motion. Montana, quick flip up the middle. White Clark has it to the 32-yard line. Mike Singletary makes the stop. What are the 49ers trying to accomplish today here? Well, that was a 46 defense. Now, every time they come out of the huddle, they've got the play called for a 46 defense. If the Bears are in something else, Montana will audible at the line. So they're set to go against that 46 with quick stuff. White Clark now has caught a pass in a record 78 straight games. He says, I think about it till I catch one. But a big game like this, I don't think about it. Second down and three at the 32. Montana on the run. It's Wendell Tyler and a first down to the 40. Fensick on the stop. 46 defense again for the Bears that time. And both the outside linebackers that line up over the tight end, they blitzed. So did Singletary blitz from the middle. Montana picked it up. 
wide open over the middle, no single Terry. Watching number 50 come in, in the gap. Tyler runs a little swing right there. And Fensick can't get there in time from his deep safety spot. 49ers got what they wanted on that defense. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. Showing a blitz for the Bears and they give it off to Wendell Tyler who fumbled. And let's see, the Bears may have recovered and they do. We want to welcome those viewers who saw the Cincinnati Bengals hang on and beat the New York Giants today, 35 to 30. Here at Candlestick Park, this is Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker. And in the first quarter, it's been a shock for the defending champion 49ers. They trail 13 to nothing. And now Wendell Tyler has coughed the ball up, and the Bears have a first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Tyler is number 26, coming into the line. Did not have control of it after the handoff. You see it bobbling around after he got it from Montana, and it was on the ground. Otis Wilson on the recovery. First and 10. Jim McMahon's the quarterback. And he's brought down by Jeff Stover. 49ers in trouble there. Had to put a blitz on themselves. Make something happen, and they did. Watch 99, Mike Walter, the linebacker here on the inside, come through. Stover's the outside. That's Walter back there first. He flushes McMahon up, and then Stover comes off a block to make the hit. Keith Van Horn, the right tackle for the Bears, is injured right now. That's been the only negative that has happened to the Bears thus far with 3.18 remaining in the first quarter. Jim McMahon came out throwing today, and this big play to Willie Gall set up the only Bear touchdown in the first score. He runs a fade pattern against Torrey Nixon, a rookie. A lot of people in the, that are Bears fans say they're not getting the dividends they expected out of Willie Gall. There's a down payment right there, folks. Walter Payton went over from three yards out, and then Kevin Butler has kicked two field goals from 34 and 38 yards as the 49ers have fumbled twice and lost two, and almost the entire quarter has been played in the 49er territory. Three minutes to go, second and 14. Tim Reitman, the tight end in motion for the Bears. Swing pass to Matt Suey. And Suey gets to the 39 where Eric Wright comes up to force the play. Chicago Bears, 5-0, and oh, try to join the Rams as the only unbeaten team. The Rams beat Tampa Bay to go 6-0. and oh. That's really a quick screen right here. Watch Walter Payton, number 34. He is out in front of Suey, downfield, watching get the block downfield right here. On Keena Turner, Turner's on the ground. Walter Payton can do it all. Mike Ditka in his fourth year. He says, well, if you win, you can coach. And if you start to lose, you go out and play golf. He's going to be coaching a while. Third and nine at the 40. That's Willie Gold in motion. And they flip it inside to Walter Payton. And Payton has a first down inside the 30-yard line for the Bears. A shuffle pass inside. Fred Dean made the tackle. Good for 13 yards, and the Bears can do no wrong. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears. All right, take a look here on a telestrator. The two outside receivers right here and here will clear that area out for Walter Payton. Payton will, Payton will take the flip from McMahon. There it is right there, kind of a Utah draw. Nobody there. He's got wide open spaces. They call it the Utah draw, they call it the flip, they call it anything, but that's a good guy to get it to. First and 10 now for the Bears on the San Francisco 27. The tight end Reitman in motion. Swing it out this time to Matt Suey. Suey head down, gets it to the 23-yard line, where Keena Turner and Ricky Ellison combine to make the stop. What a contrast in coaching. Rough and tumble Mike Ditka and perhaps the more sophisticated Bill Walsh. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, there's some concern right there today. Mike Ditka has changed his personality a lot since he took over. He said, you know, I tried to prove too much to too many people too soon to justify Mr. Hallis's faith in giving me the job. So he took everything personally. He said, but I'm okay with it now. We're all having fun. Less than a minute remaining. Second down and six at the 23. Draw play to Peyton. And Peyton inside the 20-yard line, shy of a first down by just a couple of yards. And Walter Peyton, who doesn't really fumble all that much. 
14 times in the last three years and so far this year. Watch Matt Sui again on the lead block, number 26 right there on the linebacker. See, he's got him tied up as Peyton goes by. Sui is still stuck on his block for Peyton. Great job. Third down and now one. Talked about Peyton and his, the fact is all the years he's been running that he doesn't fumble the ball. Well, you know, he's got kind of a different style. You'll notice a lot of times when he gets the ball, he holds it out in front of him with both hands before he puts it away. We'll talk about that later. Suey, close. 49ers came up strong to meet him with Todd Shell and Ricky Ellison. The clock stops three seconds remaining in this first quarter in which the Bears have spent all day in 49er territory. And it is a first down, and the clock runs down. The Bears had everything their way, leading the defending champion 49ers 13 to nothing and coming back when we do, first and 10. This is Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker here on a beautiful day in San Francisco, and they say maybe the largest crowd ever at Candlestick Park. But it's been the Bears' day so far, leading 13 to nothing. And the Bears got the first down, just as the first quarter came to a conclusion. They're on the 49ers 16. Calvin Thomas and Walter Payton are in the backfield. Thomas goes in motion. McMahon swings it out to Payton. Payton inside the 10. And out of bounds at the 5. Eric Wright making the stop on the play. There's a guy who used to get the ball automatically a million times in the old days for the Bears. You bet. Calvin Thomas this time comes out of the backfield first, and two or three guys are influenced to go with him. And believe it or not, you got number 34, Walter Payton, out here catching the ball, and nobody's within 10 yards on him. When you consider that the 49ers beat the Bears in the championship 23 to nothing, the one ingredient that was not present for the Chicago Bears was the quarterback, Jim McMahon, and he has made a difference so far. Yeah, you bet. I think uh, Mike Ditka, his coach, put it uh, best. He said, we're riding the wave with McMahon. He's an inspiration. Top-rated passer in the NFC. First and goal on the five. McMahon looking to throw, getting chased by Eric Wright, and overthrows another tackle-eligible, Andy Frederick who was involved in a tackle-eligible play and nearly caught a touchdown pass in the first quarter, overthrown. It'll be second and goal. Mike Ditka says he puts a lot of these kinds of plays in just because it breaks up the monotony of practice for his players. That time, Andy Frederick, again, number 71, normally a tackle lined up in an eligible tight end spot, had to report 49ers really aren't going to fall for that twice once the officials tell him 71 is in an eligible position. So he got behind him one time. It's not going to happen twice. Keith Van Horn, who was shaken up, is back in at right tackle. Number 78, Peyton and Thomas in the backfield. Second and goal at the five. McMahon, Chase, fires, and that's what a quarterback with escapability can do. And meanwhile, Ronnie Lott had to be drawn away from Jim McMahon by the official. Asked McMahon yesterday, why do you took, why do you tuck your shirt sleeves in? He says, I, my, they're real loose. I don't want anybody grabbing them. Watch this right here. He's out of here. There's nothing there. He'd have had a loose shirt sleeve right there. It could have been grabbed. Ronnie Lott gets him by the sleeve anyway. But McMahon gets it away. No sack. There's the end of it right there. Saw McMahon release, and then he's down. This is the 10th play on the drive coming. Third and goal on the five. McMahon with the rollout. Peyton hit by two men at the 11. Ricky Ellison and Todd Shell and the 49ers hold there. And Mike Ditka knows he's got to go for three once more. All right, watch McMahon here now. Watch him look clear to the left. He's looking left. He's looking left. Peyton sneaking over here to this side. He waits and holds till the very last minute and tries to get it to him to fool the defense. It didn't fool Todd Shell. He looked off until the very last minute. Meanwhile, wide open was this man. Against Eric Wright. A field goal attempt now from 27 yards. Kevin Butler, who already has kicked two. Steve Fuller is holding. 
And Butler is good. Three field goals for Kevin Butler from 34, 38, and now 27 yards. And so the Chicago Bears take advantage of another 49er turnover and stretch their lead again to 16 to nothing. The Chicago Bears have owned this game so far. The 5-0 Bears and the 49ers know their backs could really be to the wall if they lose this game and go down to 3-3 three three on the year. They know the Rams have already won, and we'll bring you back on up-to-date on all the scores. Meanwhile, Derek Harmon to the right, Carl Monroe to the left, and Kevin Butler will kick off for Chicago. Butler already has kicked three field goals. We'll go to Harmon, a yard in the end zone. to the 25 and brings it out all the way to the 30-yard line where Dennis Gentry makes the tackle. First and 10 at the 30 for San Francisco. Opening minutes of the second quarter. Montana, it's Dwight Clark, Leslie Frazier covering on the play out of bounds at the 35. Second down and five at the 35-yard line. 16 to nothing Chicago. We're in the second quarter and here's Wendell Tyler breaking one open. And if it weren't for Gary Fensick, Tyler would have gone all the way. A first down for the 49ers at the 46-yard line in 11-yard pickup for the San Francisco leading rusher. One of the better inside runners in the league for a smaller type individual. He gets through the hole so quick. A good job by Fred Quillen that time on Hampton. Had him turned around. Randy Cross with the block, and Fensick was the saver. Believe it or not, the 49ers are have their deepest penetration right now, their own 46-yard line. Roger Craig. Craig. To the 37, Wilbur Marshall makes the stop, 18 yards. And Roger Craig is having a sensational season in every way. Got a good block from John Frank over there. And look at this. They call him the, the catfish, the way he swims through the hole. He's a swimmer. Look at everything's in motion as he comes through there. The Bears have had the ball 24 plays, the 49ers 9. And they just had the ball for a couple of first downs, but they're in Chicago territory at the 37. Joe Montana, who's the third rated passer in the conference. Craig again. Strong to the 31 yard line, and Mike Singletary makes the tackle and a good block by the left guard, John Ayers. And they're doing a pretty good job against that 46 defense. We mentioned the three men in the middle that they have to handle. This is Dent right here at end. He takes a wide rush up, and that's been getting them in a little bit of trouble. Other pairs will just turn out on him, and they run up inside. And it's a second down five. Bill Walsh's team has to come back. The Bears leading 16 to nothing. Montana. Jerry Rice is there for the catch at the 21. Another first down and a penalty marker down about the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be against the Niners. Jerry Rice against Leslie Frazier all the way across. Montana in trouble. Rice adjusting. Montana throws on the run. Good catch. Holding, number 51, offense, repeat, second down. Randy Cross, who's playing with a cracked bone in his right wrist. Now Randy Cross, yes, he sees falling down, so he just pulled, looks like McMichael down with him. Second down and 15, back to the 41-yard line in Chicago territory, and Montana goes down at midfield, and it was Mike McMichael again. You know, he is outstanding against the run, but he is probably one of the most underrated defenders as a pass rusher. Well, they said that he's having one of his better years. This is his fourth sack of the season. They had a line stunt in there where he come looping up inside, and Montana saw it and went down before the hit, but credit the sack to Steve McMichael. Second on the team that's his fourth sack of the season he had 10 last year pretty good for a tackle third down and 23 at midfield for San Francisco penalty markers are down pass up the middle to Roger Curry bounces off a couple of defenders 
and is stopped at the 34-yard line. But don't forget, there's a penalty. Sean Gale, the nickelback, made the stop finally on Craig. He got 17 yards. Hey, I'm just so surprised that defensive teams don't have somebody just go up and sit with Roger Craig when he does what he does, did just then. The legal procedure against the 49ers. You know, Craig will just set up like he's checking for a blitz, none comes, and then he sneaks out on a little slip flare and catches it underneath everyone. Illegal formation, number 77 offense, not up on the line of scrimmage. Repeat, third down. Why do you think Bubba Paris may not have been up on the line of scrimmage? Well, I'll tell you why, because he's a little bit worried about Jim Dent's, Jim, Dent, Jim Dent's pass rush. He said Dent is so quick that he's going to have to get a deep drop to handle him, so he probably set up a little bit deeper than normal. Or Richard Dent, I'm sorry. Critical mistakes by the 49ers, Wayne. Two fumbles in which the Bears capitalized. And these penalties that set him way back. Here comes a blitz. Singletary was in there. And Montana's pass is incomplete. He was going for Jerry Rice. And covering on the play was Mike Richardson. But Singletary got to Joe Montana. The Chicago Bears have dominated the game. And you never know where they're coming from. Mike Singletary on the outside over in here. Takes a blitz. Montana blindsided. Dangerous for a quarterback. Not enough people to pick him up. They're picking up inside, and look at this shot. Montana was lucky. Fourth down, and Max Runniger will kick. Kent Taylor is back for the Bears. He is third in the NFC. In punt return, and he stepped out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. A 46-yard punt by Max Runniger. And here's what Taylor did on the receiving end. Right there, out of bounds, and we'll be back. Joe Montana has a very important series coming up here, even though the Niners start from their own nine, trailing 16 to nothing. And the reason why the San Francisco Niners are in a hole, because of this last four possessions, all resulting in scores for Chicago. Two of those field goals. The last two coming on mistakes by the 49ers. Fumbles by Russ Francis and Wendell Tyler. Chicago first and 10 on the nine yard line. Peyton and Calvin Thomas in the backfield. Tim Wrighton in the tight end. In motion, draw play to Peyton. That's a move. And runs it out of bounds at the 11 yard line at the 16. Gain of about seven yards. Good block by Keith Van Horn, the right tackle. Check it right here now. He'll turn outside. Jeff Stover was inside. He was handled excellently by Tom Thayer. Van Horn got another block, and Walter gets to the outside with some open spaces. Bears have had the opportunity to start many of their drives in San Francisco territory following the mistakes. McMahon went deep early. Second down and three on the 16. This time Peyton has it. 49er bench. Kind of a solemn one right now. Third and one. Bears at the 18. Man, under pressure. Intercepted by Carton Williamson. To the 20. He may go all the way. Touchdown, San Francisco. be too sure why Jim McMahon threw this ball. Walter Payton faked into the line. Todd Shell was back there with him. He should have taken the sack. He really couldn't see where the ball was going. Carlton Williamson was in center field. He picked it up and was untouched into the end zone. Ronnie Lott with the last block. Coming into this game as a player is down, Calvin Thomas is injured for the Bears. 
Coming into this game, the 49ers had four interceptions compared to eight a year ago at this time. But this is a big defensive play for the Niners. Look at that. Throwing off his back feet. He didn't, really didn't have a foot on the ground when he threw. Todd Shell with a big rush. But Carlton Williamson's 43-yard interception return puts the 49ers on the scoreboard. And it's now 16-7. Penalty marker is down. And Mike Ditka's Bears ahead 16-0. It's against the 49ers. So Ray Worshing has to stay on the field and will have to try another one from farther back. Joe Montana. Trying to get things started for the 49er offense. Illegal use of the hands. Number 86 of the kicking team. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the try for a point. It's John Frank. So now Wershing, the 10-yard penalty, will have to move back. This will be a 30-yard attempt for the conversion. Definitely not a gimme. So it's 16 to 6. And Wershing adds the seventh point for the 49ers. Eight minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first half. The Bears lead it. <laughs> 16 to seven the score. The Bears lead the 49ers who finally got on the board because of a defensive play by Carlton Williamson. The kickoff by Ray Washington to Willie Gold at the nine. Gold with a fine return out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Kind of a game in which the Chicago Bears felt that they wanted to show that last year's 23-0 game was no fluke. Already they have proven that, way. Well, they really have. There was no question about this going to be a high-intensity game, and they would hit. The Bears hit right with the 49ers in that game last year. The big difference here early, two turnovers by Wendell Tyler and Russ Francis. And then the Niners get back in the game because of an ill-advised throw by Jim McMahon. So the story so far has been turnovers. So far, it had been the 49ers, the only team making mistakes before that interception by McMahon, his sixth of the year. First and 10 for the Bears on the 32. McMahon's toss is caught in a first down by Ken Marjoram at the 44-yard line, good for 11 yards. Marjoram is playing in place of Dennis McKinnon, who's injured. And look at the cushion that they're playing against over there with Marjoram. That's Eric Wright, number 21, who usually doesn't play receivers that loose. Marjoram ran down and turned up in front of him. Marjoram played at Stanford. He played uh, under Bill Walsh. Oh, so he's good at adjusting his routes according to the defense, because that's what Walsh coaches. All last year he was out with a ligament damage. They say he has not lost any speed. First and 10 at the 44. Matt Sui is in motion. McMahon up the middle as Reitman is tight end, and Reitman gets into 49er territory. To the 49-yard line, Ricky Ellison making the tackle. Reitman is playing in place of Emery Moorhead, who's out with a sore knee. Let's see if we can find Reitman. Now, he'll probably set up and block, hold for a count, and slip across the middle. That's exactly what he did. He was down on the ground, even. Went down on the ground like he was blocking the defensive end, tried to get lost. He did, popped up, and McMahon got it to him. Reitman has caught three passes. Now, four receptions on the game for 106 yards coming in, three today. Second down and three at the 49-yard line. And McMahon doesn't like what he sees and calls a timeout. Seven minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first half. The Bears score the first 16. It's 16 to seven. The Bears lead 16 to 7, and of course their offensive style is a far cry, Wayne, from the way it used to be. Yeah, when it was uh, Walter Payton left, Walter Payton right. He hasn't carried the ball all that much today, but as the 49ers know, and everyone else knows, he's lurking back there. <laughs> <laughs> so is Mike Ditka on the sideline. McMahon is 12 for 19, 142 yards and a big interception. Second down and three. Pitch to Peyton. Peyton has the first down to the 
to the 44 yard line. Walter Payton gets another first down. Keena Turner making the tackle. Okay, take a good look now at a real fine block by the left guard right here. Bortz, he'll pull out, knock the Wayne board down the defensive end right here. That gets the play outside. Look at the pull. There's a the block, Bortz down. They high and load him, and there's the yardage. First and 10 at the 44. Suey, nowhere to go. Jeff Stover was the man that made him change direction, and then he got some help. Loss on the play of the yard, back to the 45-yard line. Ronnie Lott and Willie Gall downfield, having a game of their own. Let's take a look. 42 is a toughie. 83 says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block you anyway. Play's not over. Now it is. <laughs> they probably <laughs> like each other, too. Don't forget that uh, Ronnie Lott playing a new position for the second game. He's playing safety. Willie Gall, though, the wide receiver, caught a 33-yarder on the first possession to set up the Bears' touchdown. Second down and 11. McMahon down the sideline. And Eric Wright defending against Gold incomplete out of bounds. Eric Wright matching Gold step for step. There are a couple of speedsters right there. Boy, I'll guarantee you that is something. This is some throw, too, even though it was out of bounds. Eric Wright doesn't even have a chance to look around. This ball comes in on a wire. Galt with good concentration. Actually, both feet were out that time. With great concentration, Galt said, you know, I really don't have to prove myself as a football player. I played three years in high school, four years in college. I'm not a track guy. I'm a football player. He said people expected him to come in as a rookie playing like a five- or six-year veteran. Third and 11 at the 45. Four wide receivers now. In motion goes Galt. They want to get to McMahon. Wide open. He can run. To the 39-yard line. Shy of a first down, Ronnie Lott made sure that McMahon wasn't going to get to the sticks, and the few of them exchanged pleasant greetings. It is fourth down. And the way things look, the 49er defense has the responsibility here of trying to bring him back. A little swing and emotion, as you can tell now in this ball game, ever since the turnover, ever since Carlton Williamson's touchdown. A lot will depend on this next series with the 49ers on offense. Maury Buford, his longest punt of the year, 69 yards last week. Dana McLemore goes back. Buford formerly with San Diego. That's the first punt upcoming for the Chicago Bears. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Five minutes and 20 seconds remain in the first half. 49ers will take over on the 20. The Bears scored the first 16 points of the game on a Walter Payton touchdown and three field goals by Kevin Butler before Carlton Williamson ran back an interception 43 yards to put the 49ers on the scoreboard. You know, Dick, defensively, the Bears have got a good job against the 49ers by disrupting their pass patterns. San Francisco works on progression, and, which means a receiver has to be at a certain point in a certain time. And so far, the Bears bumping their receivers around have, have done a good job of preventing them from getting those, that, those certain points. The 49ers will start out this series with two tight ends, John Frank and Russ Francis and Freddie Solomon in at wide receiver as the rookie Jerry Rice gets a breather. 5.20 to go, first and 10 at the 20. Francis in motion. Wide open was Francis, bobbled it, but held on. Leslie Frazier drives him out of bounds after a five-yard pickup. A lot of plays in for the big tight end. Check the drop on Montana here. Now count the steps. One, two, three. That means it's going to be no longer than six yards for a 49er pass. Francis takes it out in the flat after going in motion. A three-step drop by the 49ers means it's going to be in the six-yard area. A five-step drop by Montana means it's going to be out around 12 to 16 yards. You can go to the bank on that. Second and five. In motion is Derek Harmon. And Harmon on the receiving end. First down. 
Just crosses the 30-yard line. Three-step drop. Gary Fensick defending on the play. You betcha we were just talking about it. Watch Montana now. He'll take a little punch step out of here, and then it's one, two, three steps. Derek Harmon comes on out, and it's in the six-yard area right on the money. And we can go to the bank on that. <laughs> First and 10 at the 30-yard line. 5.09 remaining. Jerry Rice is in the game. Solomon goes out. Roger Craig goes outside to the 45 and still going. And it took a hit by Leslie Frazier to knock Roger Craig out of bounds close to midfield after he gained 19 tough yards. And I'll tell you, in a great block by Randy Cross over here, the right guard on the other side of Montana, he'll pull and kick out on the linebacker, Wilbur Marshall, number 58. Take a look. Both the tackle and the guard pull. Fawn horses behind, but Cross's block was the key one right there. First and 10, Roger Cray. At the 49. Tyler up the middle. Close to a first down in Chicago territory to the 41-yard line. Gary Fensick and Dave Duerson, the strong safety on the play. First down. Good job one-on-one -on -one by Quillen on Hampton, and that's always going to be the key in there. If they can get Hampton blocked in the middle, they did. Tyler's the leading rusher. He lost his sixth fumble of the season so far, but he can come back and usually does. First and 10 at the 40. An audible, and moving in the line. Montana called an audible. What was the plan to call an audible against the regular defense and just try to attack the 46? They have all their plays called in the huddle against the 46. Wolf They're going to audible. 51 offense. To the other defenses, but the Bears were in the 46 that time. Across is... A man on the other side of Montana. First you see him move. Six penalty against the 49ers. First down and 15, Randy Cross. The 45 of Chicago. Montana with a fade pass to Roger Craig, who has it. He beat the linebacker, Otis Wilson. 14-yard pickup and another first down. Or close to it, short by a yard. Big blitz this time, which meant that you got people coming. You got people coming, and Roger Craig gets on the linebacker. Safety blitz from here, they come on in. And safety blitz, Fensick up the middle. They missed it by a yard, second and one. Mike Wilson in a wide receiver to the top of the screen. Second and one at the 31 of Chicago. Montana has some time, and down he goes. Richard Dent, who had a remarkable season a year ago and has been kind of slow getting underway this year. Of course, he's looking for contract negotiation, gets a sack here. Jim Dent, number 95, bottom of the screen, working against Bubba Paris, gets an outside. Richard Dent, I keep saying, Jim, Richard, don't get mad at me. You're up here, he's down there. Still don't want him mad at him. You know, you can run and you probably can hide, too. Third down and six at the 36-yard line. Jerry Rice in the game and in motion on the left. Montana looking his way. He's got Rice and a first down inside the 30. Leslie Frazier on the play. Got him right there. Montana, a little bit of a look off and then comes right back over there because he sees the single coverage and Rice on a little turnout. The ball's at the 28-yard line. Jerry Rice from Mississippi Valley State. A rookie that the 49ers traded up so that they could draft him number one. Bruce Colley, a rookie from Texas Arlington, replaces Bubba Paris at left tackle. First and 10, San Francisco at the 28. Montana going for Rice. Incomplete covering on the play was Fensick and Frazier. Bill Walsh checking the list. He comes out with a list of 25, and what did he tell us? Most of them be passes today. 
He said two-thirds of them. If Montana has a little bit more time, this might be a touchdown. Wilbur Marshall comes in, some pressure. He does. He has to release just the count before he wanted to and couldn't get it to Rice. Bubba Paris back in the lineup at left tackle. It'll be second down and 10. With two minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first half, the Bears lead it 16 to 7. Swing pass, and there's Tyler. And Tyler gets to the 25, and they're going to drop the flag on Otis Wilson. Dave Dewerson on the tackle, but Wilson grabbed Tyler's face mask. And the Bears will pay for it. Montana, meanwhile, has now completed 10 passes in 13 attempts. It wasn't a flagrant play. Face mask, five-yard penalty, and forced from the end of the run. Repeat, second down. This time he gets Roger Craig, number 33, drifting through. 55, look at nobody around him. Wendell Tyler inside and there's the face mask. Bill Walsh told us yesterday is this game more than any other is a game of matchups. Two minute warning is upon us here at Candlestick Park. It'll be second and two for the 49ers when we return. We've had the two-minute warning, and of course, Roger Craig with two big plays in this series. And when we talked about Bill Walsh saying that this is a game of matchups more than any other, he was specifically referring to Roger Craig. Well, he was. He says, if I can get Roger Craig on anybody, I'll, I'll take the edge in that matchup, along with, along with Jerry Rice, same way. And they've been getting it. And you saw what an influence Craig was that time on the last play. He influenced the linebackers inside, and Tyler got out to catch the pass. Second down and one. Jerry Rice in motion. No gain on the play, and it'll be third down. As the clock runs, Dan Hampton making the tackle. Roger Craig, top receiver in the NFC coming into this game. Dan Hampton is number 99. You see that big crowd we told you about the start of the ball game. Men over the guard, men over the center. There's just not much room to run up there. But Michael of 76 did a good job, as did Hampton. Hampton has been hampered by a sprained ankle, and of course Richard Dent has a hit pointer. Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator, as the 49ers come out with three tight ends. Third and two, Tyler bangs into his own man and gets forward close. Good second effort by Wendell Tyler, and it appears that the 49ers have the first down, but we may have a measurement first. Mike Richardson made the tackle, and a lot of ad-libbing by Wendell Tyler on a sweep. The 49ers have called a timeout. Well, they're going to have a measurement, and now the Niners call a timeout. They have two remaining. Each team with two timeouts remaining in the first half, and it is a first down for San Francisco. Short yardy situation. Now look how tight everyone is. Look at the lineman up there tight. Cross pulls. Craig leads. Cross gets his block, but Wendell slips and trips on the back of Randy Cross's legs. Stumbling around, fights forward, and still picks up the first down. Mike Richardson on the tackle. Total offense here, and you can see the dramatic turnaround from the first quarter to the second quarter. You can see them going after the ball when Wendell Tyler carries. He fumbled for the sixth time this year. And, of course, Walter Payton, we talked to him yesterday, he hardly ever fumbles. Now, Walter Payton says that, I told you, he carries that ball out in front of him a couple steps with both hands before he puts it to one side or another. He says he does that because he doesn't know which way he's going to make his cut right away. He does it to protect it. He and Wendell talked with each other in the Pro Bowl game. He says, we didn't really talk about fumbling. He said, but we talked about working out and staying strong. He says, I have a lot of respect for him. He has a lot of respect for me. Well, Payton said he's got big hands, strong arms, and maybe that anticipation. Yeah. That's another factor. But, you know, it's almost, a, those are the things you take with Wendell Tyler as a running back. He just has that style where the ball hangs out a little bit as he's, as he's getting his balance and making his cuts. He'll make some great ones, but there's always that chance. First and 10 at the 17. Montana pumps, fires, Rice incomplete. Jerry Rice incomplete. Mike Richardson defending on the play. He had him. 
And I think that that was the correct call, too, even from up here. It looked like it bounced off the grass. We'll get a better look than anybody at this shot. Montana pumped and looked left, and it's on the ground. Good call. 13th play of the series coming up now for the 49ers with 108 showing on the clock. Rice has caught two passes for 25 yards. Second down and 10 for the 49ers. Freddie Solomon replaces Rice. And the ball still at the 17. Legs all over the place. Forty ers have been heavily penalized so far in the Fourth first half. Third, Seventy-one offense, and it's Fonhorst again. Seven penalties in the first half against San Francisco. Well, Dick Fonhorst has a tough job now on that forty-six defense from the right tackle. They they want him to slide down and block the man that's over Randy Cross a lot of the time and help him out. And he just wanted to get a little extra extra start on that probably because that's such a tough block to make. Second down and 15, Freddie Solomon is in the game, and so is Mike Wilson now for the 49ers. Ball back at the 22-yard line. Montana steps up, down he goes. Wilbur Marshall and Otis Wilson, the two outside linebackers, come in and sack Joe Montana for the third time in the game. Look at those, top of your screen now, the linebackers. And here they come. 55 Wilson, 58 Marshall, 46 again. By this, by the time of the championship game, this time into the championship game last year, the 49ers had forced the Bears out of that 46 defense almost entirely. The Bears are using it now, and it's still working, so they've made some adjustments. 49ers call a timeout. They have one left. Coming into this game, Joe Montana had been sacked 14 times. After five games last year, he had been sacked only seven times, and now he's gone down three more times. And you can see how well the Bears do when they get to the opposing quarterback. The Bears last year set an NFL record with 72 sacks. They were kind of short of that pace coming into this game, but they have gotten Montana at the right time. Well, there's a guy that, that runs that defense right there, Buddy Ryan, talking to Gary Fensick and Otis Wilson. Fensick makes the calls in that defensive secondary. And that guy makes all the calls, period, Buddy Ryan. Well, as a result of that sack, this could result in a long field goal for Ray Worshing at about 47 yards right from here. The ball is at the 30-yard line. And, you know, Worshing, who has kicked a 42-yarder this year, as long as field goal, had been struggling to the tail end of last year and so far this year from the longer range. Well, he's been struggling, and I think it's because they've changed holders on him. Montana was his holder, and now it's Matt Cavanaugh. Whether you know you re realize it or not, that does a little bit to you mentally. Meanwhile, third and 23. Montana chased again. He's got Clark. And Dwight Clark is out of bounds. That'll change things considerably for Ray Worshing. Leslie Frazier knocks him out of bounds. The ball now at the 15-yard line. A 15-yard reception by Dwight Clark. Isn't it amazing? You know, through the years, it's almost like these two guys have wireless headsets. Montana and Clark, whenever he gets in trouble and runs out, it's almost like he can send a message to Clark, make your cut to the right because that's the way I'm going. Clark just adjusted to Montana coming out of that pocket, and there was the result. Ray Wershing, four for seven in field goals. This will be a 32-yard attempt. Matt Cavanaugh holding. A short snap, but Worshing's kick is good. Great job by Kavanaugh. That ball was on the ground, and he got it set up perfectly for Worshing. 32-yard field goal for Ray Worshing brings the 49ers that much closer. And with 49 seconds remaining in the first half, it is now a 16-10 ball game. And Wayne would look to be the makings of a Chicago blowout early on with a 16-0 lead. The 49ers have come back, and it was all spurred on by Carlton Williamson's interception return for a touchdown. Incentive in this ball game, you could run down a whole grocery list of them, I guess, for both clubs. Well, I, I, you really can. You know, I know that you know that the Bears want to win this game. Uh, they have said, well, it might not be as important to us as the 49ers because we're 5-0. and We've got four games coming up with teams in our, our conference. Uh, we'd, we'd like to win those. But believe me, when they came out here last, last year and lost in the NFC Championship game, you know that there is a revenge factor and a revenge motive for them in this one. 49ers, I think they just got to find themselves. They haven't done it yet this year. They played inconsistent football. 
Montana and Bill Walsh and the offensive unit on the sidelines. You saw Willie Gold and Dennis Gentry who are back for the Bears and they're standing close together. The man they obviously want to return is Gold and Wershing will be kicking off with 49 seconds to go. The Bears still have two timeouts. It's Gentry two yards in the end zone. And Gentry brings it out to the 17 yard line where Torrey Nixon makes the stop. So with 45 seconds to go it's a 16 to 10 ball game now and the Bears going on offense once more they capitalized on two 49er turnovers in the first quarter Francis fumble and Tyler's fumble resulted in Kevin Butler field goals he's kicked three the only Chicago touchdown was on their first series when Walter Payton went over from three yards out Bears have come from behind in four of their five victories including last week against Tampa Bay now they're trying to hold on to a lead Matt Suey and Dennis Gentry in the backfield. But McGann, McGann's throwing. Suey. Tripped up by Williamson at the 21-yard line. The Bears last year averaged 20 points a game. This year they averaged 32. So their offense has been better. More wide open. Second down and six. McMahon. Side arms it to Suey. Ducks under a defender and is close to a first down. And it's Jeff Stover all the way downfield who gets credit for that tackle. And 12 seconds remaining. And now the Bears have called a timeout and they still have one, but not much time. Well, eyes are on Jim McMahon. Had a lacerated kidney and missed last year's championship game. Got a stiff neck, a bruised shin, turf burn in his hand, all kinds of injuries and hurts. Since his, his favorite quarterbacks were Joan Namath because he played hurt, Jurgensen because he didn't always throw spirals, and Tarkenton because he moves around a lot. <laughs> He's got a little all of those guys, yeah. doesn't he? Especially the Joe Namath characteristic, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it's a dandy. We really enjoyed him yesterday in our meeting. He stuck around all day with us. And Mike Ditka says, you know, the thing I like about Jimmy McMahon, he thinks he's the, the best thrower, the best runner, the best blocker, best receiver. Mike Ditka certainly calmed down last year, too, and that's what winning will do for you, too. I wish he'd have calmed down when I was playing against him. <laughs> First and 10 at the 28, 12 seconds to go. And they're going to give it to Peyton on the draw play. And the 49ers finally bring Peyton down at the 41-yard line. Four seconds remain, and the clock stops. And the Bears now with no timeouts remaining. That was a 13-yard game. What are, you, what are the Bears trying to do here? Because they had 12 seconds to go. They go for a draw, waited a bit before calling the time. I think they were trying to pop Walter for a little bit longer net, and then perhaps uh, get down and call a timeout so they could kick a long field goal. Here, you know, they could almost take a long interception here. They could almost take the chance of throwing it down on one of those Hail Mary type things here because if the 49ers did intercept, uh, it would uh, be very unlikely for them to run it back the length of the field for the touchdown. It's one of those 50-50 deals. We'll just have to wait and see. Manu Tui Asisopo is leaving the field as well as Roger Craig. Of course, Craig's not likely to get his hands on the ball. He seems to be all right. There's Tui Asisopo. As the 49ers come out with their nickel package defensively, and that means Fred Dean, Big Hands Johnson, Dana McLemore and that group. Four seconds to go. The Bears 5-0. I don't know. This is the first time since the 63 title game that they've won their first five games. Title season. And they lost only one game to the 49ers that year. Maybe the last play of the half. Peyton. And it will be. Peyton's still going. Tries to get out of bounds. It wouldn't have mattered. Jeff Fuller knocks him out of bounds. It was the Bears for the first 20 minutes, but Carl Williamson's interception helped make the game closer at halftime at 16 to 10, Chicago. 
Interesting note, as Irv Cross talked about that uh, thigh bruise for Roger Craig, last week he caught 12 passes against the Falcons to tie a 49er record for receivers. Today he's caught just one pass, that for 14 yards. Gary Fincic told us that they had to put the glove on Roger Craig and Dwight Clark. Clark has caught three passes for 27 yards. So the two guys that they really wanted to concentrate on, they've done a good job because Fincic said those two guys will bleed you to death. <laughs> Kevin Butler will kick off for the Bears, who lead it 16 to 10. Carl Monroe and Dana McLemore are back. Monroe on the left, McLemore on the right. Second half is underway. In the end zone, Monroe decides to run it up. To the 25, 30, and hit hard. Thomas Sanders, but a good run back of 40 yards by Carl Monroe and slow getting up. Very slow. And we have an official's time. Carl Monroe, shaken up, was hit hard by Sanders. Watch him right here. He decided right at the last minute to come out. Dana McLemore leads him. He sees a little seam there, uses his speed, breaks one tackle, cuts back in, breaks another, and then took a pretty good shot. And I would imagine it's kind of a win factor for him out there now. Here it is on the cut in at the end of the run. And there was a helmet headgear right on in there by Thomas Sanders of the Bears. Big hit. Monroe gets a hand from the capacity crowd as the 49ers get set to operate from their own 35-yard line, which is their best starting position of the afternoon. 16 to 10 the score. Joe Montana, 11 for 15 in the first half. Craig is in the lineup in the backfield with Tyler and goes in motion. Pass is caught by Jerry Rice, the first down to the 46-yard line. Dave Dewerson on the stop. Clark is isolated, bottom of the screen. Zone defense, short help there in front. You see that the defensive back slipped back there. Clark turned up, caught the pass. That was a regular 4-3 defense, or rather Rice. Now here's Clark bumping around with Wilbur Marshall. Earl Cooper joins Russ Francis. Two tight ends, first and 10 San Francisco on their own 47-yard line. Montana chased. Good rush by McMichael, and here comes Wilbur Marshall, and Montana is tackled out of bounds. Crowd doesn't like it. Pretty good speed there by Wilbur Marshall, the linebacker. Montana's no slowpoke. Don't forget, he's playing in place of Al Harris, and has made a lot of big plays at right outside linebacker. Coming into his own right now. Let's watch the pressure. Let's see what gets Montana out of there. Hartenstein up the middle on a... On a stunt, forces Montana out. This is a side he normally runs to. If he goes right, he'll normally pass. Marshall catches in good speed. Second year out of Florida. He's forced some mistakes. Had some sacks. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Montana up the middle and wide open was John Frank. Nothing but the natural turf here at Candlestick Park, and John Frank couldn't hold on to it. He was a little off balance because he had to fight through the linebackers to get there. He was stumbling just a little bit as he got the ball. The ball was up high. Downfield, Dwight Clark had a block on the cornerback, and Frank may have gone for big yardage. Third down and 11 as Russ Francis replaces Frank. Dwight Clark goes out left, Jerry Rice to the right. Ball at the 45. Montana has his man, Wendell Tyler, who has a first down into Chicago territory inside the 40. Mike Singletary on the tackle, and that's good for 16. Well, they obviously didn't expect the blitz because they put both backs out in this pattern. Tyler and Craig run a crossing pattern over the middle. Tyler running from left to right in front of Singletary. and makes a good effort here at the end. And the 49ers driving, and Wendell Tyler with his third reception of the ball game. Are at the Bears 38-yard line, 16 to 10, Chicago. Early moments of the third quarter, and as Montana calls the audible, we have movement.
And this penalty appears to be against 51 offense. the 49ers, Randy Cross. You know, Cross and Fonhorst have had a lot of trouble so far today. It's the 46. They were in the 46 again, and it just put so much pressure on the two guards Both in the side. center. 51 offense. Repeat first time. They're all covered. Very seldom are all three of those middle offensive linemen covered, but they are in the 46 defense. We showed you that at the first of the game. It just puts a lot of pressure on them. Nobody to help them out. they got to get set up quicker. The guy can go either way on them. It's tough. First down and 15 now. Back at the 43. Montana trying to get a few of those yards back. He gets it to Craig down the sideline. Craig. Inside the 20. Mike Hardenstein on the tackle and a penalty marker is down. And judging by the look on Roger Craig's face, the penalty is against San Francisco, and that's the call. A 26-yard play. Most of it, Roger Craig is nullified. And that's the ninth penalty against San Francisco today. Pass interference, number 26, offense. Repeat first down. Wendell Tyler, a costly one. And the 49ers are back in their own territory at the 47-yard line. They were looking at first and 10 inside the Bear 20. It's a big difference. Less than 12 and a half to go third quarter. As you look at the story today in the penalty department, and the 49ers have had the short end. First and 25. Montana gets hit, but gets it off to Jerry Rice. Penalty flag is down. Steve McMichael might have put on a tough hit on Montana. Dewerson made the stop on Rice. Here's Gordon McCarter. Holding number 51 offense. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 76 defense, go to the head. The penalty's offset. Repeat first down. McMichael. Personal foul and Randy Cross again. Randy Cross is to the left of the center, number 51. That's McMichael, 76. See the hand on the back, on the numbers. Now there's the late hit with an elbow across the chops by McMichael. Both were caught. So they'll do it all over again, first and 25. Mike Wilson is in the game now, replacing Dwight Clark. Wilson to the top. Montana dumps it off and overthrows Roger Craig. He was wide open. About as open as he'll ever be. Yes. In the game of matchups, Roger Craig didn't have anyone matched up on him. But Montana overthrew the ball. And that's rare because Joe normally makes that connection easily. He makes those short throws, and, you know, they're not as easy as they look because you have to touch them and throw them over linemen and, and things like that. But he makes those short throws, those flare patterns, as well as anyone that's ever played the game. Second down and 25, and the receivers go to left. <laughs> Pressure and a blitz. Otis Wilson was blitzing. Montana finds Craig. And with all of that, they just get a few yards inside the 50 in Chicago territory. And maybe another flag down. Maybe another penalty, and there is. This one, this time, it's against the Bears. Offside. Mike Ditka who was appointed by George Hallis and has indeed revived the Bears in dramatic form. Offside, 95 on the defense, penalty accepted, repeat second down. Richard Dent. A Dent by any name. Second and 20. Third round, third year, eighth round draft pick, 17 and a half sacks last year to lead the NFC. 
So it's second down and 20. And the Niners are back in Chicago territory at the 48. Penalty flag again. Montana trying to get away from McMichael, but he's finally caught by Otis Wilson. But we have another flag. How many plays in a row now? Is that three that we've had penalties? Three straight plays? Four. Illegal motion against the 49ers. Illegal motion, 89 offense, penalty decline, third down. That's Earl Cooper, number 89. Now, see, this is the bugaboo that's been haunting the 49ers all year, Dick. It's not the same guy making the mistake time after time. They're passing the baton. You know, it's Cross, then it's Fonhorse, then it's Cooper, then it was Wendell Tyler. So it's, it's nobody can really point a finger out, but it's so uncharacteristic of this team. Last year, they barely made mistakes. Last year, they were 5-0. and oh. Now they're 3-2. and two. Tyrone Keyes, number 98, is in the defensive end. It is a fifth defensive end. Montana tries to go to Mike Wilson. The pass was behind him. Mike Richardson was defending on the play. And so now we're seeing the 49ers in the way they played against New Orleans and Minnesota. Look at him up there, bumping and running now with him, trying to keep him from that from the point he's supposed to be at at a certain time. The pass was thrown a little bit behind. Great defense by Richardson. So Max Runniger is in the punt. Penalties, mistakes, lack of execution in the 49ers. There is Ken Taylor back for Chicago. Runniger gets off a nice kick. Taylor goes out of bounds right at the 10-yard line, and that's where the Bears will take over first and 10 when we come back to Candlestick Park. Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker back in San Francisco. The Bears score the first 16 points of the game, the 49ers the next 10, but the 49ers look mediocre in their first series here in the second half, and in all due credit to the Bears, they had their hands in Montana's face throughout that series. That's what the Bears have done when they've led at halftime. First and ten, the ball spotted at the nine for McMahon and the Bears. Suey in motion. Walter Payton carries. And Payton up to the 14-yard line. A gain of five. Tui Asasopo on the stop. Bears offense with Suey lining up almost uh, two steps in front of Peyton at the fullback spot there. Almost turn, turns into like the one back offense that the Washington Redskins run or Atlanta run and the Rams run. It's this kind of a day that you can take your shirt off, but I guess they're like that even when it gets much cooler here. Okay. <laughs> second, and, second down and five. At the 14, play action this time. McMahon up the middle for Marjorie, who almost caught it. Got turned around and still almost made the play. Dwight Hicks and Ronnie Lott defending, and McMahon says, yeah, that was my fault. Watch Hicks will turn around and look for it. He's turning the wrong way. Marjorie knows where it is, but can't quite get stopped enough and just went off his fingertips. Marjorie, come back from ligament damage. He's worked hard to come back and playing in place of the injured Dennis McKinnon. It'll be third and five, and four wide receivers are in the game for the Bears. And the Niners have the likes of Fred Dean still looking for his first sack of the year. Galt. McMahon going up top and overthrows Willie Galt. Defending was Jeff Fuller. So the 49er defense holds, and Wayne, you get the feeling as this game goes on that it's a defensive game all the way on both sides. You bet it is. It's just a hard hitting, you know, you, Mike, it's a black and blue game that's not played in that division. All the one team is from that division. <laughs> These teams will hit with anybody. Maury Buford standing on the goal line will be kicking. Dana McLemore trying to give the 49ers good field position. Ten minutes and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Still 16 to 10 Chicago. Buford with a beauty. Sends McLemore back to his 30. And hit once. 
and hit again by the man who hit him once. And it's Dennis Gentry on the play. So Buford kicks the Bears out of danger. A brilliant 56-yard punt by the former San Diego Charger, who's leading the NFL in punting. 56-yard Talking about adjustments, perhaps made at halftime by the 49ers. Watch this one that worked so well, but Montana overthrew Craig. Here's Wendell Tyler here. He'll clear out. Craig will step up and delay right here, slip out into the flat. He'll be wide open, but Montana will miss him. First and 10 at the 30. Tyler going wide and hit by Mike Richardson coming up from the cornerback position. Tyler. Not much on that first down foray. Mark Mike Hartenstein also in on the play. Now you don't know, Dick, because I had to stop talking because they're about ready to run the next play where the 49ers can come back with that play and it'll work again on the Bears because it might be another one of those plays that Bill Wall said you can only show them once. Why are the Niners having more trouble with the 46 now than they did in the brief time they saw it last January? The Bears are playing it better and they're making some adjustments themselves off the 49ers. They've seen the 49ers one more time too. Time remaining, third quarter, second down and nine. Montana with a fade pass for Freddie Solomon and Richardson knocks it away. That pass was short and Solomon had to come back for that, and Richardson had a better position for that play as he knocked it away with ease. You think Richardson wasn't all alone. You're going to see Gary Fensick right here in the middle come in on a blitz, and there's nobody out here on the inside help. So Richardson knew he was all on his own with Solomon, and he made a great play. They've got the whole field to work on him out there. They chose the sideline. Had they thrown inside, they might have had a better chance. Now, those are the chances you take on defense. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That time they did. Third and nine at the 31. And here's a safety blitz. Dewerson gets Montana back at the 20. Dave Dewerson. And that's the sixth time Joe Montana has been sacked today. We talked about the chances, boy. The Bears are really forcing things, and you got to love it. Watch Dewerson come up from the outside right in here, hit a gap, and he's got a no touch on Montana. Times it perfectly. Times it perfectly. The guard comes out, tries to get a hit on him, and there's no way. Runnaker punting away, a high kick, coming over is Taylor at the 33. Taylor to the 45. The tackle by Bill Ring, and it'll be the Bears with good field position when we come back. Runnaker kick to Taylor. Back at Candlestick Park, first and 10 for the Bears at their own 45-yard line, the best field position they've had in quite some time. 8.50 remaining third quarter. Bears lead 16 to 10. Payton with blockers off the right side. Payton breaking a tackle or two and has a first down. Into 49er territory at the 44-yard line. Gain of 12 for Waller Payton. First and 10 at the 44 now for the Bears. In motion is Ken Marjoram. McMahon under a rush. Marjoram is back there and he can't hold on to it. He got behind Eric Wright. Good move by Kenny Marjoram, who played under Bill Walsh at Stanford. And what a throw. The guy was falling down. McMahon was falling down. Look at this motion. And now he'll turn it up. Watch him take it into the post. Move right there. Get him going. Take him back out to the corner. McMahon throws his falling down. And this is almost on the money. Keep in mind that Marjoram is playing in place of Dennis McKinnon, who leads the Bears in all receiving categories. Injured left quadricep has kept McKinnon on the sideline today. Second down and 10 at the 44. Emory Moorhead, the regular tight end, also hasn't played. Peyton going right. And tripped up. Ricky Ellison. That's a great, great play out there Keena, by Keena Turner. Turner. Keena Turner tripped him up. He was the man who made the play. Pretty good friends, too, Keena Turner and Walter Payton. They were on a cruise together a couple of years ago, and Keena Turner says that Walter Payton is a practical joker about 32 hours a day. Yeah, and he said Walter got claustrophobia on that cruise, too. <laughs> I don't think Walter Payton likes cruises and boats after talking to him yesterday and Keena the other day. No hills to run. 
Third down and seven for the Bears. On the 40. 7-13 to go, third quarter. Haven't had a score in this third quarter. Handoff on the shotgun to Willie Galt. End the round, and Galt is stopped at the 35. Shy of a first down by a yard. Ronnie Locke and Eric Wright both made a big play on Willie Galt. And there's a shaken up 49er. It's Ronnie Lott playing with a bad shoulder to start with. Watch this now. They'll hand off to Galt. He'll have Mark Bortz, number 62, in front of him. It looks good for a while. And then the 49er hustling defense. Red shirts come on in. Lott made the tackle. As I said, he's nursing a sore shoulder over there. It's been a rough year so far for Ronnie Lott. He's been beaten for several touchdown passes. Move from his... Uh, Comfortable cornerback spot to free safety. Well, you know, he's, he's really basically a safety playing cornerback, but he, he wants to play out there. He's got so much pride, he doesn't want to be moved in the middle of the season. The Bears are going for the first down on fourth and two at the 35. They either punt it, field goal will be a 52 yarder. So Mike Ditka going with Jim McMahon here. Fourth and a long, short two. McMahon fires. He's got it, flagged down. That's Matt Suey, and Suey has a first down. Big yardage inside the 15, but a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. You know it by the crowd. Penalty against the Bears. Nullifies a 24-yard gain. Holding number 74, offense. Repeat fourth down. Jim Covert. It tells you a story, though. It tells you, it tells you how much confidence and faith that Mike Ditka has in Jim McMahon. Third, fourth and two, let him go for it in a situation like that. And it was a good play. You bet it was. Covert is number 74, going against the Wayne Board right there. It's a wrestling match. Board's winning it. Covert gets the takedown, and that's what they call on the hold. 24 yards goes for naught. And now Maury Buford will be punting. Dana McLemore is back for the 49ers with 5.55 remaining. McLemore, by the way, hasn't really broken a punt return yet this year. And he won't this time as the ball bounces back, takes a Chicago Bear roll, and is out of bounds at the six. Wilbur Marshall covering on the play, and the Niners have a long way to go when they take over. Worst starting position for the 49ers, the six yard line, first and 10. Pass out to Wendell Tyler, and Tyler close to the 15 yard line. The tackle by Mike Singletary, and Otis Wilson, the Bears, trying to cling to their lead. They had a 16 point lead, it's six right now. Second and two for the Niners on the 14. Montana dumps it off to Bill Ring. Ring has a first down past the 20. The last two plays you saw were just really basic 49er plays. It's a long handoff, the short passing game. Same as running plays, only it's just a short pass. Bill Ring roomed one year with Jim McMahon at <laughs> yeah. Brigham Young. I loved him. McMahon said he'd come in after having some fun at 2 o'clock in the morning and Ring would be studying. And then he said Ring had signs up on the, up on the ceiling above his bunk. And they would say, I'm going to be in the NFL someday. I'm going to be in the NFL someday. He is. It wasn't a sure shot. It was a struggle. He's had a lot of rough spots along the way. First and 10 at the 22 and a jump pass. Knocked down. Jerry Rice covered by Leslie Frazier. The Bear cornerbacks have had an outstanding afternoon today. Yes, they have. Frazier and Richardson both. He was there right on the money, just as the ball got there. Yourson, of course, has been playing in place of Todd Bell, who is a holdout, as well as Al Harris. They remain holdouts. So far, Bell hasn't come in, and the Bears haven't budged either. To stalemate. Second and ten. Tyler tackled high by Steve McMichael. Carries it out to the 24-yard line. One of the best middle linebackers in the NFL, number 50, Mike Singletary. He's protected so well in the middle that very seldom does he have someone coming out to block him. That time he did and he fought over it, jumps over the pile, and still makes the tackle and gets in on it. 
It was Singletary who two years ago was unstoppable against the 49ers in a game we did in Chicago. He had 12 tackles. Almost single-handedly beat the Niners then. Third and eight at the 24. Montana under a rush. Throws it up for grabs. And Singletary is upset about something, maybe because he thought he might have had a shot at catching it. 46 defense again, and they got good pressure on him from the outside by... Well, you're an old linebacker. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> He's going to be all right. Max Runnaker back to kick. Ken Taylor is back for the Bears. Good kick by Runnaker. Both punters have done the job today. Taylor at the 24. Flag down as Taylor is down at the 31-yard line, and it's Milt McCall on the tackle. A 52-yard kick by Max Runnaker. And another penalty. 3.29 remaining, third quarter. It was 13 to nothing Chicago at the end of the one quarter, 16 to 10 at the half, and it's still 16 to 10 there. I'll tell you, Dick, we can talk and talk and we'll listen to this. Talk about X's and talk about O's and talking about making adjustments at halftime. Illegal block come up the waist. Number 52 receiving team during the return. 10 yard penalty, first and 10. And you can put all those things together, the X's and the O's and the adjustments, but this is the kind of game right here that who wins is a team that's going to hit the best. McMichael, number 76, in the middle here will stunt and put the pressure on the quarterback. There he goes up the middle. Big pressure. First Cross Montana to hurry. Ball at the 20, first and 10 for the Bears. 3.28 remaining. Tim Reitman, the tight end in motion. Wide receiver screen to Marjoram on the sideline, and Marjoram fights his way close to a first down. Dwight Hicks covering on the play. Playing him tough, a little loose over there again. They've been doing that a lot of the afternoon. Marjoram just two steps down. That's just called a hitch pattern. He has Van Horn out there to help him. If he could cut back up inside, but he couldn't. Gain of nine, second and one. Mike Singletary on the bench for the Chicago Bears. Suey, first man up, first down, head down. What a bull run by Matt Suey as he gains a first down and 17 yards in all to the 46-yard line. Ronnie Lott finally brings down the Raging Bull from Penn State. And you really realize how good it was because he broke a tackle in the backfield. There's a hit right there. Stover had an arm on him. He knocked somebody flat on their back. That was Carlton Williamson. And then finishes it off. He ran over three people on that run. Great effort. First and 10, Bears at their own 47. Quick pass out to Willie Gall. Gall trying to get a few extra yards for the first down. Ronnie Lott defending on the play. They're going to spot it back at the 45 of San Francisco, just shy of a first down. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. Galt has caught three passes today for 51 yards, but his 33-yard reception on the first possession of the day by the Bears Set up their only touchdown by Walter Payton. And McMahon has gone to the three-step drop. They've thrown quickly the last two or three times. They may be setting up one of those hitch and goes. Jim Fonhorse, number 55, now an inside linebacker for the Niners. Second down and one. Payton, first down to the San Francisco 40. Ricky Ellison on the tackle. 12 carries, 69 yards for Walter Payton, who came into the game averaging 4.4 yards per carry for the Bears and not the workhorse that he used to be. And he's grateful for that because, of course, in the aging process, you don't want to be the workhorse you were. So the Bears are really working hard here now to get in field goal position. The field goal right now is very important to them. Put them up by nine, which means that a touchdown wouldn't beat them. The 49ers would have to score twice. At the 40-yard line, illegal procedure, and Dwayne Board and Jim Covert swung at each other at the line after that whistle. 
By the way, Michael Walter is back in at inside back. Encroachment, 78 defense. Mano Tui Asasopo. So 10 penalties now marked off against the 49ers. 10 and they've been all different people. Contact foul, number 78 defense. First down, five. First and five. Get to Iasisopo playing at nose tackle. Michael Carter on injured reserve. Right over the center. He's early. And he's called. Ball at the 35 yard line. 16 to 10 Bears. Peyton fakes the throw. And tiptoes down the sideline and is out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And it'll be another Chicago first down. Wayne, they're moving certainly within range for a Kevin Butler field goal. He's already kicked three of them today, but uh, the Bears obviously looking for more than that. It would do them worlds of good to get anything on the board right now. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Bilt McCall is going in now, linebacker for the 49ers. Tory Nixon. And the 49ers are using a 4-6 right now, but they call it a Navajo. Against the Navajo, McMahon going deep for Marjoram and overthrows him, and Eric Wright covered him well. Well, let's see a 46 defense by another name. Yep, you bet. A lot of people are doing it. Atlanta's doing it. Take a look right here. You get it. Over here, you've got your two linebackers side by side, and in the middle, the three men covering the guard to tackle in the center. Same way the Bears run it, just a different name. That's a compliment when they start running your own defenses on you. Well, Mike Ditka said he says everyone around the league's using the 46 now. Oh, well, Minnesota has, Atlanta has, now the 49ers. Second down and 10 at the 28. 44 seconds remain in the third quarter. The Bears, 16, the Niners, 10. They give it to Suey. And Suey fighting his way to the 25. Jeff Stover making the tackle. Didn't quite get to the 25-yard line. And it'll be third down and seven for Chicago. Bill Walsh, who has seen his team on a roller coaster this year. Everyone expected the San Francisco team to be 5-0 and at this point. Instead, they're the team that's been struggling, and the Bears come in flying high at 5-0. and So they played championship caliber football only one time. That was a win over the Raiders. Roger Craig stretching. He came out and started this second half. There's the gun, and that's the end of the third quarter here at Candlestick Park with the score of the Chicago Bears, 16, the San Francisco 49ers, 10. Third down and seven for the Bears as we start the fourth quarter at the 25 of San Francisco. McMahon gets free, but he stopped short, and it's Ronnie Lott that prevented the first down and a penalty marker down. And Mike Ditka is saying roughness against the 49ers, and that's the call, and that is a critical call. They had stopped Jim McMahon to set up a possible field goal try, and now the Bears will have an automatic first down. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, piling on number 49 defense. Half the distance, first down. Ronnie Lott had made the hit, but it was Jeff Fuller who finished it off and was called. Let's take a peek. Here's McMahon. Lott makes a good play because McMahon made a good cutback. And then he called that. Fuller coming over as the pile on. And it looked like he hit more ground than he did McMahon. Let's see. Hard to tell again. And you've got to protect the quarterbacks in that situation. Half the distance is the penalty, so it's first and ten at the ten-yard line. Walter Payton off the left side. And now the 49ers with an aroused defense. Dwayne Board making the tackle on Walter Payton. This is the opening minute of the fourth quarter. Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker in what has been a playoff-style game from the start today. Another look at that personal foul call on Jim McMahon. As we mentioned, it was Lott on the tackle of McMahon on the scramble. And then at the end of it, they call 49 coming in late. 
Yeah, they were right. Second down and eight. Second and goal at the eight. Mike Ditka active on the sideline. McMahon looking for six. They have it at the goal line. Penalty marker down. Willie Gold incomplete. Defended by Eric Wright on a quick look into the goal line with Willie Galt. A last minute effort by Eric Wright got the ball away from Galt. Playing bump and run, short post pattern, great throw. He has control. Eric Wright over the top and knocks it away. You can't play it any better than that. No penalty thrown. Galt was hit by Eric Wright, as you can see, and is now third in goal at the eight. Good a play as you'll see. Big play in this ball game, even though it's early in the fourth quarter. It's been a defensive battle. A bear touchdown would be big here. And a flag down. Let's see if it's a delay call. Full start, number 74 on the offense. It's Jim Colbert, five yards. Most of the penalties have been on the 49ers side. So it'll be third down and goal at the 13. Former number one pick in his third year. Very strong at 6'4 and 278 pounds. Jim Covert. And the youngest captains in the league, too. Third year in the league, and he's one of the captains for the Bears. Marjoram goes out to the left. Anderson and Manis to the right. Golf in motion. Handoff to Peyton. So the Bears are just looking to get the three here. That's what that was all about. And they're going to bring in Kevin Butler as Dwayne Board and Todd Shell make the tackle in the middle of the field. So Kevin Butler will come in to try to give the Bears a nine-point lead, which could loom large the way this game has gone, Wayne. This means that the 49ers will have to, if he kicks it through, they'll have to score twice. It will be Fuller, 29-yard attempt. Butler has kicked three, his longest from 38 yards. And the kick is good. So Kevin Butler, the rookie from Georgia, has kicked four field goals for the Chicago Bears today. And with 13.09 to go in the fourth quarter, it's now 19 to 10 Chicago. Capacity crowd here at Candlestick Park, 60,523. That's the third largest crowd to see the 49ers play at Candlestick Park. There were 964 no-shows. Meanwhile, Carl Monroe, and Dana McLemore go back for the 49ers as Kevin Butler with four field goals today, getting set to kick off. Butler's field goal, the first points for the Bears since early in the second quarter. Monroe, short of the 10. And Carl Monroe is tackled at the 28-yard line by Jim Morrissey. Now we'll see on this drive what the 49ers think they've got. What they've seen that they've made adjustments to, and here comes William Perry down on the kickoff, the refrigerator they call him. That's not a four-flat guy, but ooh, he can deliver some hits. That's like a sumo guy. <laughs> <laughs> Number one pick for the Bears this year, and a controversial one. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Roger Craig, flag is down. Craig battling his way to the 33-yard line. Steve McMichael and Dave Duerson forcing the play from strong safety. That's against the 49ers holding. They've had trouble that way all day. Right side of the line. I don't know where this one was from. All year. Holding, holding. number 86 offense. Repeat, first down. John Frank. So the 49ers penalized 90 yards on 12 occasions. Not the mark of a champion, to say the least. And these are the other mistakes. 
19 to 10 Bears. First down and 20, back at the 18. Freddie Solomon is in motion. Montana hits Frank. Frank gets away from a defender and is wrestled down at the 24-yard line. Otis Wilson and Wilbur Marshall, the linebackers, and we have yet another yellow flag thrown. And this time, another penalty against the 49ers. Keep in mind what all of this means. The 49ers, if they don't come back and win this game, will drop to 3-3 three and three and fall three games behind the unbeaten Rams, who are 6-0 and and won earlier against Tampa Bay. Illegal shift, two men moving and not resetting for a full second. Repeat first time. Last year before the Super Bowl, I talked to Don Shule and he said, what impresses you most about the 49ers? You've seen them play a lot. And I said, well, they don't make many mistakes. They're a, they're a smart team mentally. That hasn't been the case as you've seen today. First and 25, back at the 13. And it was tipped by a Steve McMichael. They were going for Roger Craig and McMichael got a hand on him. Nothing downfield, so it's he's got to go to the alternate receiver out here, and that's a great effort by McMichael. Get up in the air and tip that ball away. You see Fonhorse was out there in front, could have gotten a block on the linebacker, and it would have been pretty good yardage. That was a one-man screen set up out there, but McMichael ruined it. Bill Ring is in the game, replacing Roger Craig. Second down and 25. Montana has time, hits Dwight Clark at the 25 and he's tackled at the 27 yard line. Fensick and Duerson, 14 yard gain. And it'll be third and long for the 49ers who have to scratch back in this game, 19 to 10. The Chicago Bears are playing like they are the world champions in this one. Definitely playing like they want to be. Bears have befuddled the 49ers with their defensive alignment today. Jim McMahon has added just enough of a spark to give his team the lead. 11 and a half to go in the fourth. Third and 11, and here they come on a blitz. Montana going up on top for Jerry Rice. Incomplete. Leslie Frazier covering on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Check this, the Bears send nine guys. Fensick right here comes in on a blitz. The backers over here blitz. Everybody's blitzing. And I'll tell you, they put the pressure on Montana. Here they come, everybody. Nine people. They've only got two defenders back there. And here's the punt by Runnaker. Ken Taylor is back at the 23. And upended at the 34-yard line by Michael Walter. 11-14 to go. the time remaining we've had only one offensive touchdown in the game that by Walter Payton on the first series of the game the defenses have taken over when we go back to 1963 the last time the Bears won the NFL title Wayne it was the keynote of it all was their bedrock defense it was. yes it was and the only game they lost was here in San Francisco to the 49ers that season first and ten at the 34 Coming up to the line is Williamson. Peyton carries, gets outside. And Walter Peyton, close to a first down, may even have it. Dana McLemore making the stop, then a good block by the right tackle, Keith Van Horn. They're shy by about a yard, but a good nine yards. Look at what the 49ers have accomplished on the ground in the second half. And this team had been, the 49ers, coming into this game, the number two rushing offense in the conference. Second and one at the 43. Payton gets a first down. Looked for the daylight and has it to the 47-yard line. Ricky Ellison on the tackle. 93 yards today for Walter Payton. The only game this season that he went over 100 was in the opening game against Tampa Bay when he gained 120 yards. 
Said a good day for him and kind of get it. He would like would be to carry the ball 20 times. He's approaching that. A couple weeks ago, when they won a ball game against the Redskins, I think he carried the ball just six times. But he said they were blitzing a lot. It was time to go to something else. First and ten, the Bears at their 48-yard line. Peyton on a pitch. Gets outside. And picks up five or six yards. Jeff Stover making the tackle. And a block by Mark Bortz, the left guard, as the Bears chew up time and keep the ball on the ground. It'll be second down and about four for the Chicago Bears. Bob McKittrick, offensive line coach for San Francisco. Solve that 46 or whatever it is the Bears are throwing out tonight. It's Peyton again. This time he's hit from behind, but may have the stretch to get close to the first down as the clock continues to tick. Against the mirrored 46 that time, the Navajo defense. He's over 100 now. For the 65th time in his remarkable career, Walter Payton has gone over the 100 mark. Last week he scored his 100 and 101st touchdowns. He has a TD today. And only Jim Brown, Lenny Moore, John Riggins, and Franco Harris, along with Don Hudson, can say they've scored 100 or more touchdowns. Yeah, and you know what I like? He started all but six games in his career. Third down and one. And it's Peyton again. And he appears to have the first down to the 42-yard line. Gary Big Hands Johnson and Milt McCall on the tackle. He's doing a good job with the clock now. McMahon is using that 30-second clock well. It's down to 8.49. Did is doing a good job with that gum on the sideline. <laughs> They're going to measure. The Bears led 13 to nothing at the quarter, then 16 to nothing early in the second. And it's a first down for Chicago. First and ten for Chicago at the San Francisco 43. Two, three, gets by Dean. Gets by Keena Turner. And is finally tackled at the 36. Second down and four, Matt Suey. And Tom Shell grabs a hold of him. Suey. Shy of a first down, but the clock continues to run. They're doing a great job with the clock, as I mentioned before, and it's coming from that offensive line. Every time the ball is snapped, there's a great surge by the white-shirted Bears, and they're controlling the most important element of this game right now, the line of scrimmage. The Bears have held the ball for four minutes on this drive, which only frustrates Bill Walsh. His team needs a touchdown and a field goal to pull it out. There have been six straight running plays by the Chicago Bears. And you can expect one here on third and two, but you never know with Jim McMahon. Under seven minutes to play. Peyton. And Peyton has another first down for the Bears. And in the situation, he told us yesterday that he likes to have it. If I had one play left to run, I'd have wanted it to be a short yardage situation where we needed it. And Walter Payton was part of a Chicago Bear team that struggled. Yeah. And he was the workhorse, and it was Payton Burn left down. and Payton right, and the Bears never mounted any kind of an offense. And that's what Payton has done today. All-time leading rusher in the NFL. Scott Garnett is now in a nose tackle in place of Tui Asasopo. Not much Bill Walsh can do on the sidelines. The Bears in a textbook drive here. First and ten on the 31. Walter Payton finds a hole. Covers up in a hurry. Second and seven. This time Matt Suey. Doesn't go anywhere on that play. Scott Garnett making the tackle. 5.15 showing on the clock. And it'll be third down. If the Bears kick a field goal here and they're stalled on this drive, that would mean that the 49ers would need two touchdowns to pull out this game. So then they're almost in a situation now on this defensive down. It'll be third and about eight where 
perhaps they might have to take a chance with an all-out blitz, much like we've seen the Bears do a couple times. Two years ago in Chicago on a rainy, windy day, we saw the Bears beat the Niners 13-3, and that seemed to be the starting point for the Chicago Revival. Third and eight. Pass. Caught by Suey. And Suey is out of bounds. He has the first down at the 20-yard line. Ricky Ellison made the play. And that's a gutty play by a gutty quarterback. Great composure by McMahon. Look, play action. Here comes the blitz. He steps back, lofts it over an arm, right out to Suey out in the flat. Great composure. Matt Suey, a reliable workhorse in support of Walter Payton all these years. And the Bears, with their first pass of this drive, have held the ball now almost seven minutes. First and 10 at the 49er 20-yard line, 4.34 on the clock, 19 to 10. The Bears are leading, trying for their sixth in a row. And into the ball game is Dennis Gentry. And that's got to show the confidence that Mike Ditka has in Gentry in this important game, going with a fresh player, but a player who really hasn't been in there in the hitting uh, to hold on to it, and he did for one play and then here comes number 34 back in and all they're thinking now in that bear huddle and with this guy and Matt Suey is hang on to the ball because you know the four runners on defense will be digging in there after four minutes remaining second down and seven Bears already in solid field goal range where Kevin Butler has kicked four today and it's Waller Payton gets a hold Chicago Bears who were beaten 23 to nothing in the championship game last year here at Candlestick Park have broken this game open as Walter Payton has run 17 yards for his second touchdown of the ball game 132 yards for Walter Payton today and the Bears lead it 25 to 10 a drive that went seven and a half minutes, Wayne. And great blocks over there by Mark Ports and Jim Covert. Had people down. Kevin Butler with Steve Fuller doing the holding. And the kick is good. 341 remain. And it looks dim for the 49ers. The Bears are on top in a big way. Seven minutes and 33 seconds. That is the key to the scoring drive as the Bears lead it now 26 to 10. 341 remaining. Kevin Butler will be kicking off. Carl Monroe and Dana McLemore are back for the 49ers. Monroe at the five. To the 25 and hit hard at the 27-yard line. Jim Morrissey on the tackle. Watch the blocking at the point of attack on the Bears that time. Everybody got one. The tight end will block down, get a block. Covert pulls out here, kicks out, boards the guard, comes around and goes through. Walter Payton, perhaps the best runner ever, takes it the rest of the way. Kick out on the linebacker by Covert. Bortz fills inside. And then the great ones can do the rest. He rode Ronnie Lott into the end zone. First and 10 at the 27, penalty marker down. Montana will go down for the seventh time in the ballgame. Tyrone Keyes and William, the refrigerator, Perry. But there was a penalty. 325 on the clock. Bears were offside on the play, and there is Fred Quillen. And coming into the game as he's holding his left knee, you talked about the duel between Dan Hampton and Fred Quillen, a big one today. Well, it sure was, and it was all the way across that line with the uh, airs and cross the two guards, Quillen the center. Offside, lining up, number 95 on the defense. First down, five, injury timeout. Called it again on Richard Dent. Quillen is shaken up. Forty Niners center Fred Quillen being helped off the field with 325 to go. 
And who expected the 49ers, Wayne, to be 3-3 three and three after the first six games as defending champion? Well, I don't think certainly anyone did, Dick. As you see the look of depression there on Ricky Ellison's face, uh, they've painted themselves in, uh, in a corner, so to speak. The Rams win again today, so they're, they're three games behind in their division. So what they're looking at now is perhaps wild card down the road, and that's no guarantee. And this man and this team, Jim McMahon and the Bears, are perhaps looking at a a changing of the guard, so to speak, a shifting of powers in the National Football Conference. And Mike Ditka, first and five, 32, fumble. Wendell Tyler, your center. Jim Leonard came over from the USFL, number 63, replacing Quillen. Watch the exchange. You don't get a whole lot of time to work on it in practice. It's a different guy. It's a different feel. And that does not look like the defending world champions. Jim Leonard, who played with Tampa Bay before he went to the USFL. The Bears are playing with a zeal and confidence that marks teams that go all the way. They look good, don't they? Montana to Bill Ring. And Ring stumbles at the 21-yard line. The Bears will be 6-0 and with victories over... Washington impressively and the 49ers in impressive fashion but they beat the Niners today to the Bears playing playoff style football Montana down seven sacks and this was Richard Dent the clock is ticked down and we have our two-minute warning and many of the crowd if not most have left the Bears have driven them out Max Ronniger will be kicking with two minutes remaining in this game at Candlestick Park. Taylor fumbles and it goes out of bounds. Disappointment mirrored on the faces of Wendell Tyler, Jerry Rice, 151 to go. Dennis Gentry and Thomas Sanders make up the backfield now for the Bears. As Walter Payton leaves the game after a glorious effort today. Here is Sanders, ninth round draft pick from Texas A&M, and is tackled by Jeff Stover. The 49ers dropping to three and three puts them in a big grab bag with other teams that will have wild card on their minds. And who expected Bill Walsh to be thinking that at this stage of the race? Hardly anyone, and I and I don't think, and even though that they prepared themselves in training camp by saying and warning the players how hard it is to defend, that it's everybody's big game. I really felt that. Uh, that, that they thought in their own mind that they'd be five and one or four and two at the worst at this point. They thought they could press the button like they did against the Raiders. And you can't do it. Second and ten at the 39. And the handoff to William Perry playing in the backfield with a minute to go. William the refrigerator Perry carried the ball. Uh, I think that might be a message to the Angus formation from last year in the <laughs> NFC Championship game. <laughs> when, when, when Bill Walsh put Guy McIntyre back in the backfield. And the clock runs down. The Chicago Bears go 6-0 for the first time since 1942 when they were avenged. 